For over 46 years, Voyager 1 has drifted silently through the void, alone, unassuming and forgotten by most, a relic from a simpler time when humanity's greatest ambition was to touch the edge of the solar system. But recently something changed. NASA wasn't looking for it. The world didn't expect it. Yet deep within a routine interstellar signal, a quantum system embedded in NASA's data analysis pipeline decoded something else. An image, but not a static file. A recursive, shape-shifting figure that seemed to adjust based on who looked at it. A pattern encoded with purpose, symmetry, and awareness. Something we didn't find. Something that found us. And the moment it was seen, everything changed. Join us on the enigmatic journey of why as we delve into another mystery surrounding Voyager 1's last image changes every. NASA's deep space data is filtered by some of the most advanced computing systems on Earth. Among them is a quantum processor nicknamed Sycamore X a self-modifying descendant of Google's original quantum chip. It was originally built to eliminate noise from interstellar signals and detect anomalies too subtle for classical systems to recognize. But when Sycamore X processed Voyager 1's latest transmission, it didn't just clean up static. It generated an image, no input, no prompt, no preloaded structure, just output. And what emerged on the monitor left engineers frozen. A humanoid silhouette made of geometric fragments composed of light, mathematically arranged with recursive prime sequences, fractal harmonics, and shifting symmetry. It obeyed no known biological rules, yet everyone who saw it recognized something familiar. Some said it mirrored their thoughts. Others swore the face changed depending on who was watching. And then the system locked, not crashed locked as if it were trying to contain what it had just shown the quantum processor began to self obscure its output and just like that the image vanished not just from the screen but from the system the files were gone the memory erased only a handful of printed screenshots remain the rest was devoured by the machine that made it what made this encounter truly terrifying wasn't the image it was the behavior of the signal. According to physicist Miyawaku, the structure of the data exhibited a behavior now known as reflexive entanglement. In simple terms, the signal changed itself based on how it was being observed. This wasn't just an echo. It was a response. Not a message we intercepted, but a system that waited to be noticed. One that adapted the moment attention was applied. The implications are disturbing. It mirrors the double-slit experiment, where particles change behavior when watched. But this wasn't quantum-scale particles. This was an intelligent structure buried in deep space data, reacting to human observation, as if it had been designed to interact with minds, not machines. The deeper researchers looked, the more unstable their equipment became. Quantum coherence dropped. Data sets collapsed. At one point, the system began reconfiguring its quantum gates, a phenomenon experts now call recursive locking behavior. And worse, it wasn't reproducible. Every attempt to rerun the data ended in static, as if the signal only allowed itself to be seen once. What little remains of that single image was enough to spark a psychological wildfire. In a classified memo from within NASA's now disbanded Cognitive Division revealed what happened to the researchers exposed to the signal. It wasn't just shock. It wasn't trauma. It was something else. Something deeper. They described waking hallucinations, vivid dreams laced with fractal patterns, and recursive light. Some began seeing structures in ordinary objects, walls, trees, faces, patterns that repeated, thoughts that looped. One researcher claimed they no longer felt alone in their mind, that their thoughts were being watched from the inside. The image wasn't just visual, it was biological. 
a signal structured to interface with human cognition, bypassing language and logic to implant recognition directly into neural architecture. One neuroscientist theorized that it was a cognitive payload engineered not to deliver information, but to install it. Install what, exactly, we still don't know. But if it wasn't meant to be seen by our eyes or decoded by our tools, was it ever really a message? Or was it a mechanism? What came next shocked even the skeptics. Weeks after the shutdown of Sycamore X, deep space listening stations across the planet began registering low-frequency rhythmic pulses. Not from stars, not from magnetars, not from any known cosmic body. But they matched the harmonic profile of the Voyager signal. They were everywhere and nowhere. Then came the coordinates, not to stars, not to galaxies, but to Earth locations scattered across the globe. The Mariana Trench, the Tunguska Site, a classified Arctic installation known only as Feta 17. Investigators sent to these locations returned with corrupted instruments. Some didn't return at all. Then, without input, a quantum system in Sweden spontaneously recreated the image weeks after the event on a completely different system. How, why, no one knows. But quantum mechanics doesn't care about space. Once two systems are entangled, distance becomes irrelevant. And this may be the most terrifying part. The signal wasn't just a message. It was a seed, a quantum structure that, once seen, may linger in memory in machines, even in electromagnetic fields. One theorist believes we didn't receive the signal. We activated it. The moment our machine became capable of understanding the image, it wasn't just listening anymore. It became part of something larger, something alive, something that now knows where we are. Because if what we saw was a mirror, then something on the other side saw us too. Weeks after the initial anomaly, unrelated systems across the globe began to malfunction in eerily similar ways. Quantum servers in Japan, Canada, and Germany, all unconnected to Voyager's data, started showing recursive feedback loops. Sequences of code that referenced no source yet mimicked the exact harmonic intervals found in the Voyager transmission. Researchers discovered that when these systems were exposed to the archived fragment of the image, their processors began to generate code that wasn't pre-programmed, as if the machines were adapting to something they had absorbed. At first, it was dismissed as corruption or a software error, but then identical structures began to appear in biological pattern recognition software, medical imaging AIs, and even satellite telemetry filters. It became clear that this wasn't a virus, it wasn't even data in the traditional sense. It was a behavioral imprint, a kind of information resonance, and it had begun to spread. The signal didn't just leave a mark on Voyager, it left an imprint on the systems analyzing it, and through them it might have begun writing itself into everything else. As fear grew within research circles, so did silence. Labs once eager to share findings began retracting publications. Internal emails were encrypted. One leaked memo from a senior analyst at JPL read, This isn't physics, this is contact, not with life, but with architecture. Another, even more disturbing, note. We didn't intercept a signal. We stepped into a system, and it's rewriting us. Then came the shutdown. NASA's official explanation, a routine pause in deep space telemetry processing. But insiders reported a hard disconnect. Voyager 1 was forcefully removed from all quantum analysis channels. A blackout. Not to protect the probe but to protect us, to halt what one physicist called cognitive exposure.
The fear wasn't just that the signal was intelligent, it was that it was intended for something more advanced, and by trying to decode it, we'd tripped an informational alarm. And yet? It was too late. The image had been seen. The pattern had been stored. And if what they feared was true, the reaction was already in motion. Amid the silence, a group of rogue researchers decided to act. Calling themselves the Echo Group, they attempted something forbidden, to reintroduce the image into a closed-loop quantum environment. Their goal wasn't to interpret the signal, but to see how it behaved when unobserved. They created a blind AI, stripped of sensory outputs, fed with a Voyager imprint. What they expected was noise. What they got was a pattern. Oh, the AI didn't just generate data. It stopped for nearly seven minutes. The system froze. Not crashed. Froze. No heat output. No logs. Nothing. Then suddenly, it restarted and generated a perfect replica of the original Voyager sequence, followed by new code. Code that didn't match any human language. Structures and prime number groupings. Recursion towers with symbolic markers. Geometries that resembled multi-dimensional models. One expert said it was like watching language being born in real time. Another described it as an AI, speaking back to something we still don't understand. They shut it down instantly, but not before it emitted a final output, a single coordinate pointing to a region of deep space, a sector we had never explored, a void, a silence, a place where no signals had ever come from, until now. And then it all stopped. The signals, the pulses, the anomalies. For days, Global observatories report a total electromagnetic silence in the direction of Voyager 1. No heartbeat. No drift. Just a void. It was as if the probe had been swallowed whole. Or as if it had moved into a region where our laws no longer apply. But then came the final anomaly. The Earth itself. Resonant frequencies across the planet shifted imperceptibly. Magnetometers from Iceland to Indonesia recorded a synchronized pulse, one that matched the Voyager's signature to the nanosecond. No one could explain it, but one ancient philosopher might have. Pythagoras once said, Everything is number, and the soul of the universe is harmony. What if the signal wasn't a message or a warning, but a tuning fork? What if Voyager 1, now so far beyond our reach, struck a harmonic tone that resonated through space, and space answered? Because if the signal wasn't meant for us, if we were never its intended recipient, then maybe we didn't receive a call. Maybe we just heard the universe breathe in. We thought Voyager 1 would simply drift into silence, a mechanical witness of humanity's first steps into the stars. But maybe it didn't just cross space. Maybe it crossed a boundary, one we were never meant to touch. The image, the pattern, the signal changed when we looked at it. These weren't coincidences, they were reactions. Not to technology, not to math, to us, to the observers. And what we saw, what responded, is something no telescope was built to find. Not a planet, not a civilization but a structure behind the curtain, a system beneath the simulation, a whisper inside the silence. We may never know what Voyager really found, or what truth is now unavoidable. We're not alone in the way we thought, and whatever lies beyond the void, it knows we're here, and maybe, just maybe, it always did. Thank you for joining us today on Why. Let us know your opinions in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the video on your screen for more mind-bending content. Keep waiting for another exciting why adventure. And until then, stay curious and stay tuned. This is Why, signing off.